Hello everyone, welcome to yet another lecture series on basics of electrical engineering. In this video, we're going to talk about behavior of a pure inductor in an AC circuit. So let's get started. So uh, we all know an inductor is basically a passive device that is uh, used for various purposes in electrical engineering. But uh, it is very important to know how the inductor behaves with respect to an AC circuit so uh, that it gives us a clear picture of uh, where to use inductors and how it can be used and what is the power factor associated with it and how does the voltage relationship uh, takes place with respect to current in a circuit which has an inductor. So in order to study all of these, let's look at each and every aspect of uh, the behavior that is with respect to current waveforms uh, the phasor diagram as how the voltage and current are related the impedance offered for an inductor the phase difference uh, between the voltage and current the power factor associated with a pure inductor and also how what is the power relationship in a pure inductor for an AC circuit so let's get started uh, off uh, with the current relationship before that uh, we considering an inductor connected to an AC source the source uh, voltage is uh, having a magnitude of Vm sin omega t. The reason why sinusoidal voltage is applied uh, is already indicated uh, in our uh, one of our previous video that talks about the generation of alternating voltage which is always a sine wave. That's the reason why we're using sine wave for AC analysis. So uh, in case you've not watched that, please do watch it. I'll be uh, adding the link in the description below. Uh, so we are having a voltage across the inductor uh, drop to be equal to Vl and I is the current flowing through it. So let the alternating voltage be V is equal to Vm sin omega t as I've already told you earlier. So now the current flowing through it is given by the formula of I is equal to 1 by L integration of V dt. This is according to uh, the relationship for the current expression for an inductor. So uh, once that is done, I will be substituting the value of V that is Vm sin omega t in this case. And uh, I will be integrating sin omega t integration of sin omega t is minus cos omega t and uh, integrating omega you will be getting 1 by omega over here and substituting you will be getting Vm by omega L minus cos omega t that is the expression that you are getting. Next is uh, what can be done is that cos can be written in terms of sin uh, minus cos theta is there so minus cos theta can be written as sin of uh, theta minus pi by 2 so that is what is written over here minus cos omega t is replaced as sin of omega t minus pi by 2. The reason why we are doing this is because we want to establish a common relationship in terms of sin for voltage and current expression. Over here the voltage expression is V is equal to Vm sin omega t. Over here you have uh, the current expression as I is equal to Im sin omega t minus pi by 2 where Im is equal to Vm by omega L. This quantity is taken as equal to the value of Im. So over here if you clearly observe this equation and the equation over here you can clearly see sin terms are there but the current expression that is associated is that the value is 90 degree lagging that is uh, because omega t minus pi by 2 is there so that means minus uh, constitutes uh, a value that is lagging that is with respect to 90 degree over here because of the value of pi by 2 that is uh, indicated over here so can we say uh, as a conclusion the for a pure inductor current lags behind the voltage by 90 degree because vm sin omega t uh, is the voltage expression i am sin of omega t minus pi by 2 that is minus pi by 2 minus indicates lagging so lagging by 90 degree and that's the reason why we'll be saying current always lags behind voltage by 90 degree in a pure inductor. This is one of the most important steps and this should be remembered uh, and understood throughout your life. You have to be using this somewhere or the other uh, places in electrical engineering. So be very careful with the basics. So once this is done, um, next is the waveforms, how it looks like. So uh, generally sinusoidal voltage for uh, is represented in this particular format starting from zero. And uh, uh, since the current lags behind the voltage, it is starting after pi by 2 uh, once it reaches pi by 2 it will start because of the fact that the current lags behind the voltage by 90 degree and that's why it's indicated over here in this particular fashion so once this is understood uh, the next concept is phasor diagram how is the phasor representation taking place as I've already told you in our previous video with respect to resistor that the reference is always taken with respect to this particular direction that is in the horizontal axis since I lags behind V uh, by 90 degree so it is written in the down direction the arrow head is in downward direction 90 degree clearly indicates that they will be perpendicular with respect to each other and that's why it's indicated exactly in this particular position 
uh, once this point is clear we'll be looking at the impedance offered by a pure inductor in an ac network so we all know uh, impedance by definition is the opposition offered by that particular uh, network uh, for the entire uh, uh, for the circuit uh, for that matter so uh, in that case you'll be having z is equal to v by i uh, because uh, it is the ratio of uh, the voltage and uh, the current uh, for that particular matter so we'll be writing uh, v as vm and i as im because we are only concentrating with respect to the magnitude that are associated with this particular circuit so vm im can again be written as vm by omega l because of the relation that we have got in our previous slide that is indicated vm vm will be cancelled the impedance offered will be equal to omega l so what is this omega l it is called as the inductive reactance and it is denoted as xl so that is the reason why we will be saying xl is equal to omega l uh, in case of an uh, inductor so this is one of the most important uh, fundamental uh, requirement in understanding understanding how does inductor behaves and what is the impedance offered by an inductor for an AC circuit. So for DC supply what happens since the frequency is 0 the value of XL will be equal to 0 because uh, F is 0 so omega that is omega is equal to 2 pi F and uh, the value of omega will also be 0 so the product of 0 into anything will be 0 and that's the reason XL is, is equal to 0. So uh, that means when uh, a DC supply is given to an inductor the resistance offered by the inductor is 0 that means it will ideally be acting as a short circuit for a DC supply. So this is one of the most important uh, concepts that needs to be uh, remembered throughout your life. So uh, I hope this concept is clear. Once this is done, we will be looking at the phase difference. As I have already told you, phase difference is the angle between the voltage and current phasors. Uh, the phase difference between voltage and current as derived earlier is 90 degree. So phase difference between voltage and current is 90 degree. So what is the power factor? Power factor by definition is uh, defined as the cosine of the angle between voltage and current phasors. So co cosine of the angle, cosine of the phase difference is 90 degree over here, cos 90 is equal to 0. So the power factor ideally in case of uh, an inductor is 0 uh, in this consideration. Uh, so once this is done, what is the power associated with an inductor? So instantaneous power is given as the product of voltage into current according to Ohm's law. In case you have missed out this video, please do watch it. It will be included in our description. So V is nothing but Vm sin omega t and I is equal to Im sin of omega t minus pi by 2 that is uh, derived in our uh, uh, relationship with respect to current and uh, what is being done is that I am keeping V and I am VM and IM together sin omega t is kept as it is and sin of omega t minus pi by 2 can be written as minus cos omega t so that's the reason why minus sin is coming here and this quantity is represented as uh, cos, cos omega t according to the trigonometric relationship ASTC rule that you call it uh, and then this can be further written as that is sin omega t sin theta cos theta can be written as sin 2 theta by 2 and that's why I'm substituting sin 2 omega t by 2 so minus vm im by 2 sin 2 omega t so uh, what does this indicate I've already told you in uh, one of our previous video about average so average value of a sinusoidal signal is equal to 0 for one complete cycle in case you have missed out that video please do watch it that will give you a clear understanding is of what average value is why average value is necessary and why average value is equal to 0 for a complete uh, sine wave cycle for one complete cycle so average power from this term is equal to zero because if you are having a sine wave in this particular fashion average of, of positive and negative will get cancelled out to each other and you will be remaining with p is equal to zero so in that case power consumed by a purely inductive circuit is zero can we consider that because when we are talking about power it should be only average power so in this particular quantity if you see sign is associated with it so when sign is associated with it the average power for a sinusoidal signal is equal to zero that means this entire quantity will be zero because something multiplied by zero will be zero hence power consumed by a purely inductive circuit is zero that means what does this indicate inductor never consumes any power it only stores the energy and it transfers the energy from from one point of the circuit to another so this concept made it interesting that inductor can be used in a lot of applications where it doesn't only consume power it will only be able to act as a storage element and that's the reason why these devices are called as storage devices because they don't consume power they only transfer the power from one particular point to another point by storing some energy so 
ideally speaking power consumed by a purely inductive circuit is zero this is one of the most important aspects and definitions uh, with respect to power uh, of a pure inductor so this is how the waveform looks like why the waveform looks like this is because if you see minus is associated with a sinusoidal quantity that's why it's starting from negative and uh, from sin uh, the magnitude associated with it it will uh, continue its direction according to the sinusoidal quantity that is here so that's the reason why it starts from negative and continues in this particular direction so some of the most important important aspects with respect to power some conclusions that we can talk is i have considered the same diagram that is shown previously during first pi from duration zero uh, first pi by 2 duration of the cycle that means from 0 to pi by 2 if you carefully observe the power is negative and power flows from the inductor to source whenever the power uh, is indicated with negative direction that means the energy stored in the inductor will be given to the source and that's the reason why it's called as uh, power flows from the inductor to source uh during the next half cycle power is positive that means the source is giving power to the inductor so whenever the power uh, diagram associated with a positive peak with an inductor indicates that the power is delivered from the source to the inductor if it is negative again uh, the inductor will deliver the energy to the source so that is the reason these are two important conclusions that we can observe from the waveform and uh, average power consumed is equal to zero as i have already told you previously so what does that mean so the power consumed by a pure inductive circuit is zero so uh, power circulate uh, hence power that is circulated in a purely inductive circuit is called as reactive power so some amount of power is circulating it uh, it only um, uh, stores the energy and it does not dissipate energy i mean it does not uh, uh, produce losses uh, with respect to ideally speaking uh, the energy uh, consumed by an inductor is zero that's the reason why we can say power only circulates in a purely inductive circuit and that means this circulating power is called as the reactive power this is the ex uh, this is the beginning point of the concept of reactive power taking place in existence with respect to ac analysis so i guess this concept is uh, pretty much clear i have some some dipped up and have made uh, this concept look as simple as possible in case you have any questions feel free to reach out to me by typing in your questions in the comment section below if you like this video please do like it subscribe and share it to as many people as possible and um, thanks for watching this video thank you